Hi, my name's Dan. I hope you're doing really well. In this video, I'm going to show you six vintage basses that I have. I'm going to do a little playing around on each and see what you think. So this is a 1968 Fender Precision bass. It's got James Jameson Labella flat wounds on it. Anything sort of soul, Motown, old school vintage vibe, I tend to use this on it because that's the tone. Uh, an old vintage P bass with flat wounds just sounds really, really good for that. Also, Pino Palladino with the neo soul movement from about the early 2000s onwards, I think P basses came back into fashion. And this one just has that tone. This is the tone knob all the way up and down a bit darker. <laughs> This one's a 1978 P bass. We've got a maple neck. I think it's an ash body. We've got stainless steel elite strings on it this time. Haven't changed the strings in a while, but the, the body, the neck and the strings mean that this one sounds brighter than the other one. This is the tone knob completely down. I usually record with it completely up, tone knob completely up. These days there are so many amazing bass manufacturers. I think it's one of the golden ages right now to get a great bass that is cheap and brand new. There are also a lot of new basses that aren't great, but you know, I've got a lot of these vintage basses and I, I, I like both. I like the modern sound, I like the vintage sound. There is something about one of these basses that just plays really well, it feels really good and it sits in a mix. This is the most important point for me. I record a lot with this and it sits in the mix. I use this one a lot more than the 68P actually. And you know, even slap you can play. Uh, quite well on this. The neck is nice and slim and manageable, which is unlike a lot of P basses. So that's why I think when I played this one, I really gravitated towards it. And as I say, I've used this on, on a lot of stuff and you can't go wrong with one of these. It also works really well with a plectrum for rock styles. Kind of uh, funky kind of stuff. This bass I've probably recorded with more than any I own. And actually, when you hear YouTube videos like this one, you're hearing a bass out of context. You're hearing a bass um, not in an actual track, which is really the place you need to you need to hear how it sounds, or with a band. Next up, we have a 1978 Music Man Stingray, another maple neck here. So you get that bright tone, very famously used by Lewis Johnson and Bernard Edwards. And it's got that sort of funky, very punchy tone. This one's got stainless steel strings, again, elites that I usually use. And it's got this very famous Music Man humbucker pickup. Let's turn up the bass a little bit treble down a little bit. Treble up a bit. You boost the treble in the bass. You get a really good slap tone. Also, where's my plectrum gone? I think this is a really good bass for rock as well. Either if you attack the strings a bit, get that nice sound. So for me, rock, funk, and even pop, this bass really excels. Back to Fender with this 1975 jazz bass. A Fender Precision has a single split coil pickup, and this one has two single coils. One at the neck position and one by the bridge. So both fully on, tone fully up.
these are stainless steel strings and a little old so this bass has a more of a mellow little bit of a darker vibe to it it's got rose a rosewood fingerboard and again it'll be ash or alder i'm not sure which if you know let me know in the comments the 1975 maybe that era they had certain woods that they used if you solo the front pickup back off the the back one completely keep the tone actually no, roll the tone off a bit you get a bit more of a darker p bass type tone The neck on this is slightly odd. It's actually chunkier than either of the P bases I've got. But when when I played this, and I recommend that whatever base you want to buy, be it vintage or brand new, make sure you try it because everything looks so good on, on the internet and, and sounds good if everyone's dialed in the tones properly. But you might play it and it just feels terrible to you. This one, despite the chunky neck, feels really good to me. Let's solo the back pickup. Front one completely off, tone completely up. You you get a thinner tone, but more of that Jacko kind of thing. A bit more of the front. And that just brings out the mid-range. If you play a bit closer to the bridge, you, you get a more of a percussive, punchy tone. And this is probably the most versatile bass that I have. Um, a lot of players back in the day would use, a lot of funk players would, would use a jazz bass, people like Bootsy Collins. And the soul Motown players would use a P bass. Don't forget that back in the day, these were the only basses that were available or, or amongst the only basses that were available. Nowadays, we have so many different options that you don't have to have a vintage bass. A little bit of slap on this one. I should have mentioned at the beginning, all the basses are going straight into an Avalon U5, which is going into a Universal Audio Apollo, straight into Logic. I'm not compressing, I'm not doing any EQ, you're just hearing the sound of the bass alone. This is a 1978 Rickenbacker 4001, used by people like Paul McCartney, Chris Squire and Geddy Lee. I'll play the front pick up on its own. A lot of players say that you should, you have to play a Rickenbacker with a pick, but you can play it with things as well. Here's both pickups. Back one. With a plectrum. This slightly strange looking bass is a 1973 Gibson EB3, probably most famously played by Jack Bruce. I think it's mahogany. Again, if you know, let me know. I should probably know these things. But despite being shorter scale, it's got this big, big tone to it. That's this big front pickup. This is both. And the back one, you always get this slightly thinner, punchier tone when you have a pickup that's close to a bridge. I think this bass excels, probably with the front. Plectrum. I'm always interested in when you have a bass like this, which is supposed to be rock, and then you're playing you know, some sort of Motown groove, like what's going on. That could be part of getting your own voice, is to get a bass that's supposed to work in a certain genre and just playing it however you want to play it. There are no rules here. And this video isn't really about getting a vintage bass. I want to cover different tones and that's why I've got these. Also, I love basses and, you know, I like having an example of, of these different basses that, that incredible manufacturers have made over the years. But I also love modern ba basses. I hope this gives you some sort of ideas if you're in the market for a vintage bass. All the ones that I've bought are 
from less desirable eras because when I was buying them 10 years ago, I just I didn't have enough money to spend on $10,000 bases. So they were all, you know, £3,000 or under. In fact, the 68 was the most expensive and all the others, I think, were under £2,000 when I bought them. So they've all gone up in value, at least. That's another good reason for buying vintage bases. But for me, um, even though I didn't use amps and I didn't use effects, you could probably hear that they had different characters. And certainly when you play them, they all feel different and they all make you want to play in a slightly different way. So I hope you got something from that video. If you did, please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you next time.